large proportion of the film is about the idea of negotiating death and negotiating grief and shock and anger. Hi, my name is Hannah Perry. I'm an artist that's based in London. <laughs> Hello, Hannah Perry. We are here in Frankfurt in the dance and ballet studio by Marion Balzer. To me, it's so impressive and overloading each time when I see the film, when I see Gush, it's that it has so many layers. It's yeah. a multi-layered narrative. It's a hidden message somehow as yeah. well. You know, it's somehow about somebody in the past because there are memories popping up and yeah. memory is a subject to talk about but in general that it's about the loss of a person and the trauma and to to cope with that yeah the the film actually does have some kind of uh, narrative form um, so it starts out with the, the struggle then it starts out with the loss and the shock yeah. and the rest of the film there on in is kind of more about um, like our relationship to loss and grief and what that's like because from my perspective that's the only thing that I can really know for sure um, <clears throat> like what that feels like I can't imagine what it feels like to want to take your own life I can't imagine what it feels like to have any kind of very very serious like frightening um, delusional situation so a large proportion of the film is about the idea of negotiating death and negotiating grief and shock and anger and trauma and um, nobody tells you really about the fact that what that's going to feel like or I didn't expect to f I've expected to feel sad if that ever happened to me but when it does happen I didn't expect to feel anger yeah. and and keep like having mm -hmm. rhythms of anger as well or like panic attacks mm -hmm. or feeling so scared that I just couldn't, I didn't know what to do with myself and having these waves of intense emotional kind of struggle over that period of time. So a lot of it is about how, how we negotiate with loss that of loss, control. loss of control and how that brings up things within our own kind of, you know, mental grip on the world and it, how it shakes everything and it shakes that up. And so like, that's why um, a lot of the rest of the film um, is largely based on my, the writing was based on my kind of processing that, or my re psychological response to that. Strange and unrealistic at times, but let us speak to the standard. Hidden messages in the colours of cars passing on the streets or seeming general posts on Twitter broadcasting on an empty room. The television is an issue, drifting from one idea to another. I think also you felt the need to say something. Yeah. So it's also, I think, connected not only to memory, but also to the mental... Yeah. Yeah, mental health situation yeah, exactly. in, in... not only in, in, in Great Britain, but in general. The male suicide rate is the biggest killer of like men under 40 in Britain. What the general consensus is, is that when somebody wants to commit suicide, it's not that they want... Um, their life to end, it's that they can't see a way that the situation will change. And that's actually kind of like a very interesting way to put it because not being able to see a way out or not being able to see a way that things can change could also be a byproduct of um, being closeted or hidden. It's very easy for things to go unnoticed. Even going back to like the, the, the technology side of things and social media, I mean, it's very like a Marxist idea of like alienation, this, mm -hmm. this sense of like, we're all connected, yet yeah, we're all kind of alone. So it's like alone yes. together. <laughs> <laughs> Equally evasive. <laughs> More subtly irrational. We've gone on holiday by mistake. I like to think he's gone on holiday by mistake. Surprise birthday parties and over-elaborate dinners that took hours to cook. The reflection of an Armani trench coat in the pound shop window. Do you ever just look in the mirror and think, fuck you? The use of the camera, this 360 degree camera, mm -hmm. I was also thinking, yeah, the camera surrounds me and I don't step out of the film. Yeah. Because if I'm watching it in a 360 degree, um, yeah projection it surrounds me and I'm just stuck in it yeah so it 
somehow on this level it also connects to the overall subject. I yeah, think. I think so. I mean, I wanted it to have like that kind of vis visceral sense of um, being kind of encapsulated within something, even from an emotional sense or like how in, in all encompassing those feelings are. To try and put the viewer at the centre of, of the... Um, of the experience. Um, in front. Yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> um, so, that, yeah, the whole image would be surrounding you and there, was, there would be no kind of uh, way out. But you also collaborated with many other persons and, and groups. Yeah. So is it part of your, how you say, working <laughs> to step out of this yeah. inner circle to, to yeah. get out? And totally, totally. To I mean, share. I, I love collaborating with, with lots of people, you know, for example, working on the audio for this, I worked with the London Contemporary Orchestra. That perfect job, that perfect career, that perfect family, that perfect fucking big television on which you can watch reruns of EastEnders. I love you, he said. Also what you said, the collaboration in the film is very, yeah, very visual and you can also hear it very good yeah. with, the, with the sound as well. So It's not written as first person perspective. It's not about me or about my friend, it's about what those emotions and things feel like. So which then made it very easy to collaborate with um, people because I could read something and then people could bring could their, own interp it, yeah. Yeah, their own interpretation of what they thought that that felt like through music or yeah. through dance. I really admire working with um, movement artists that have a sense of like a, a training and a, and a kind of um, like a kind of real connection to their body in a kind of very creative way and uh, a connection to movement and how movement is a kind of like physical embodiment of emotion in some kind of way. Hannah, thank you so much for being here and having the talk with me today. <laughs> thank you very much for having me.